what if we have 9 minus 5x times 5x minus 9? So it's a binomial, right? We first outer inner last, or you can think of it as just distributing the 9 into two terms and then distributing the negative 5x into two terms. Same exact thing. So the first terms would be these two. 9 times the 5 is 45. Uh, x. Notice there's no x squared here because this is just a 9 and then there's just an x there, so it's 45x. And then the outside terms is negative 9 times the positive 9, so it's going to give you negative 81. And then the inner terms, the negative 5x and the 5x is going to be multiplied to give you 25, and then x times x is x squared. But notice that it's negative 5 times the positive 5, so actually this is a negative sign like this, and then the last term is going to, the last terms, negative 5x times negative 9 gives you positive, 9 times 5 is 45, and then you still have an x here. So you have, uh, you have uh, 45 minus, 45x minus 81 minus 25x squared plus 45. Then you look and see what can I combine. I have a 45x and I have another 45x. So I can combine those to 90x minus 81 minus 25 x squared. Now in general, when we have polynomials, we always want to write them with the highest power of x first, so it'll be 25, negative 25 x squared, then this power will be 90 x, then the constant will be 81, negative 81. So negative 25 x squared plus 90 x minus 81, that's the final answer. All right, and all of these will just proceed in a similar way. What if we have for our next one, x minus 2y, and then 3x plus 4y. Uh, 3x plus 4y, like this. All right, well, what if we have that? Again, first, outer, inner, last. First terms, x times the 3x will be 3x squared. We add the exponents. Outer terms will be x times the 4x, giving you 4, and I uh, apologize, this is a y, actually. So it'll be x times 4y, so 4 times x times y, because we have two variables mixed in like this. The inner terms will be negative 2 times 3 will be negative 6x times y. And then the last terms, negative 2 times positive 4 will be negative 8. y times y gives me y squared. So we're just multiplying the constants and we're keeping the variables together, combining the exponents when we can. Of course, we can't combine these anymore because they're different bases entirely, but uh, as far as we can't combine the exponents, but this is the same term as this, so we actually can combine terms. What is four plus a negative six? We'll give you negative two xy, and then this is negative eight y squared. So the answer is three x squared minus two xy minus eight y squared. And that is the final answer. All right. What if we have 5 times h minus 3 times k, h minus 2k for the second binomial? So 5h minus 3k, h minus 2k. It's crazy because we have two variables, h and k. It looks weird, but it's the same thing. First, outer, inner, last, or think of it as distributing this term into each of those, distributing this term into each of those. So the 5h times the h will give me 5. h times h is h squared. Then this one going into the last term will be negative 2 times the 5, giving me negative 10. But then I have a k and an h. I can't combine those, so I write them as hk, right? Then the inner terms, or we can think of it as just distributing this into this guy, negative 3. It would be negative 3 times 1, giving me negative 3, and then an hk, which I can't combine anymore. And then this one going into the last term, last times last, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. And then I have kk, which means k squared, like this. And then I can combine terms, 5h squared. This is the same term as this because the variables match and the exponents match. Negative 10 minus 3 is negative 13hk, then 6 k squared. That's the final answer. 5h squared minus 13hk plus 6k squared. All right, I only have a few more. Um, as we get farther into it, we're going to have uh, more variables and maybe some weird exponents, but ultimately it'll be the same thing. What if we have 2 times p plus 3 times q times 3 times p minus 2 times q, like this. 
So think first, outer, inner, last, if that helps you. So first terms will be these two. Three times two is six. Uh, what's p times p? It's p squared. Okay, then the outer terms will be this. Negative two times positive two is negative four. And you have a q times a p. I can't do anything with that other than to write p times q. Inner terms, three times three is nine, positive nine. And then q times p, again, I just write it as p times q. Now that does look weird, nine pq, but that is what it is. And then the last terms, negative two times three is negative six. Uh, q times q, q squared. And of course I can add these terms, so I'll have six p squared, because of the same. What's negative four plus nine? Five pq minus six q squared. That's the final answer. So let me check, six p squared plus five pq minus six q squared. That's the final answer. All right, what if I have, <clears throat> Um, 10 times R minus 3 times S. And feel free to pause this and work these yourself. It's fine uh, to get practice. R plus 2S, like this. First terms are these terms. So 10 uh, R times R would be 10 R squared, like this. Then the outside terms, 2S times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. And you have R times S, which means RS. Then the inner term, negative three, uh, right here. So you have negative three times one. And then you have, again, r times s. And then the last terms will be these two. Negative three times two is negative six. And s times s is s squared. These are like terms. So it'll be 10 r squared. Here's 20 minus three means positive 17 r times s. Here you have minus six s squared. So 10 r squared plus 17rs minus 6s squared. All right, we only have two more, and they're a little more complicated. Actually, this next one's not much more complicated at all. What if we have t, and on the outside, on the inside here, t minus two, and then we have another times t plus one. So you see here, it starts to get a little bit more complicated because you know how to do this multiplication if I told you to do that. And you know how to do this multiplication if I told you how to do that. Now I'm putting them all together. What do you think you do? You can do it lots of different ways. But what I want to do is multiply only these first two things first. t times t is going to give me t squared. t times negative 2 is going to give me negative 2 times t. This secondary term I'm just going to save for later. It's perfectly fine to multiply two things, get the answer, and then take that answer and multiply times this. Now we know how to multiply this using FOIL or using distributing terms, the same exact thing like I've been telling you over and over again. So let's go over here and say that t squared times t is gonna give me t to the third power, we add the exponents. Then t times the outside here, t squared, is gonna give me t squared times one, which gives me t squared. Then the inner terms, negative two t is gonna be negative two t squared, we add the exponents together. And then the negative two t times one is negative two t. And now I can add these terms together. So I have t cubed. What is one, the implied one, minus two? It's gonna give you negative one t squared. I don't have to write the one there uh, because it's implied. So I get t cubed minus t squared minus two t. That's the final answer. So if you have multiple things out here, work on them separately and then continue expanding the multiplication as you go across. Which we will get some opportunity to do here. m times n times m minus n times m minus 2n. Now, if I gave you this, you know, a couple lessons ago, you you know, it would be really hard. But now, you see, you know how to multiply this, and you also know how to multiply this. So just work your way over. Do this multiplication first and save that other thing for later. So what I'm going to do is multiply this. What is mn times m? Well, the m will be adding the exponents to give you m squared n, because you multiply the m times n times m and so then you can add the exponents on whatever is alike. The n comes along for the ride. The minus sign is multiplied because it's multiplied by a positive. And then you have m, and then n times n is n squared. So this multiplication turns out to be this. And then you have m minus 2n. In this case, you multiply these terms, giving you the m squared n. Here you multiply these terms, giving you the m n squared. Now we do FOIL. The first terms will be these multiplying this times this. Now you have another m multiplied, so that's gonna give you m to the third power times n. Then you have the outside terms. You have the negative two multiplied by one, so you have a negative two. 
And then the n squared doesn't multiply by anything, but I do have an n times an n, which means it's gonna be n squared. So multiplying these, I have the negative two, I have the m squared, and n times n gives me n squared. Then I go to the inside terms, the negative times the positive gives me negative. The m times the m gives me m squared. The n squared comes along for the ride because he has nothing to multiply with, like this. Then the last terms, negative times negative is positive. Two, and then m has nothing to multiply with, and then n times n squared gives you n to the third power. It's a little confusing keeping track of the exponents, but it's not too bad. Now what do we have? m cubed n. What is, and these are like terms, m squared n. So negative two plus a negative one gives you negative three m squared n squared plus this last term m n cubed. m cubed n minus three m squared n squared plus two m n to the third, that's correct. Okay, so you see the concept of multiplying uh, binomials is not difficult. What makes it difficult is when I give you a problem like this with lots of different variables. But notice that none of the rules change. When the bases are the same, you're multiplying things together, you add the exponents. That's what we've been doing all the time with these m's and, and increasing the exponents. When you have things on the outside, you have to distribute them on the end. If it happens to be a binomial, then you distribute each term in. Collecting like terms means that everything has to be the same so I can add the coefficients there. So as we go farther in algebra, the rules, these rules will never change. We just have to get used to using them in different situations. So make sure you understand this, build your skills in algebra, and then follow me on as we go through the rest of the lessons in this class where we build all of the skills using step-by-step -step examples. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.